Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and in this video here I'm going to be talking about a good location to build a base in the border zone. So right now I am in the eastern portion of the border zone. If you scroll out all the way, I'm kind of like dead set in the middle of the map, just a little bit to the left, off center. And as you can see, I'm east across the river from the hub and also east across the river, river from Squin. And I'm kind of at the border of uh, the swamp, Shem, and Skinner's Roam right here which is a pretty good area because uh, Swamp is like uh, mid-30s. Skinner's Roam is probably like 40s to 50s. And when I'm giving these numbers, I'm um, specifically talking about the toughness on your characters. You want at least like mid-30s in toughness to go into Swamp and to do well in there. And Shem, um, you're going to want probably mid-40s to mid-50s because there's lots and lots of beak things in that zone. And uh, also, I think Band of Bones is the humanoids that run around, uh, roam around there. And the Band of Bones humanoids also have skills in the 40s. So you need to be able to handle both beak things and the Band of Bones. Skinner's Roam is like a, a mid teen zone. So that's uh, it's kind of good to go there. But the Holy Nation patrol around there. So be warned if you... Uh, if you have Shack or skeletons or skeletal limbs or hivers in your party or really anything besides a white guy. Uh, actually, any humanoid. They uh, scorch landers. They accept with open arms, too. So that's that's incorrect. They're not a uh, they're not that racist. Apparently, they only dislike any non humanoids, basically. And they uh, they're not too fond of humanoid females either. Um, but they but they will still accept you with um, open arms if you're a humanoid female in there. So, um. Looking at my base right now, I'm going to explain a little bit about my base, why I chose this layout, what each building does, and stuff like that. But before we do that, these, uh, this is the reason I chose this location. It's got two iron mines in, uh, in the area of the base. And uh, they're, all, they're both pretty close to each other, as you can see. And it's a good little section for iron mining. And there's also a copper mine up here, right here. That is uh, more or less the main reason that I chose this location because it's very, it's got all the iron we need. It's also got all of the copper we need. And sorry, I'm kind of shouting right now because Kenshi has that really, really loud uh, bass background song that just basically shakes the entire house with a sub if you have a subwoofer for your computer, which uh, I do. Uh, this building here. This has a electrical bench, or sorry, it has a uh, an armor crafting bench, leather armor crafting, a leather tanning bench, and it has a weapon smithing bench. However, I don't have enough fabric, so I don't. Um, this it, the building is kind of unused to uh, to a little bit of a degree. Although I also have this a regular weapon smith instead of a weapon smith um, number two, and I built this one for a reason. Uh, the weaponsmith number two, I mean. The reason I built this one is because I can actually assign um, Ruka to it. Let's see. Let's remove these. I can assign Ruka to this, and she can make... Uh, she can level up her weaponsmithing, even though this is a rank one weaponsmithing bench. So, and I'm going to give her a light too, because if you uh, work in the dark without a light, it reduces your skill. It gives you a skill penalty. Uh... But I can make Ruka work on a weapon bench numero uno instead of a weapon bench numero two. It won't use fabrics. It'll only use iron plates, and she will still get the same amount of EXP towards um, the next skill level. So I can essentially uh, assign her to this weapon bench and have her work on it for until her weapon smithing is, like, in the 90s, basically. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Uh... Let me see, I want I want it to go up at least, there we go, like 1%, so I can show you that it's going up. And uh, she won't make any good weapons this way, however, she will raise her skill for relatively no money at all. And uh, and that's good in my opinion, that's that's win-win as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so that is that one building. This next building over here is my uh, robotics and electrical um, building, it's also where I keep my food. And it's also where I keep my general storage chest. I usually keep some limbs on hand. And uh, I also have some electrical components here, which I occasionally take out of the boxes here. Like, I'm, I'm going to do it right now. Well, actually, let me move Infinite Wing Wang outside of the building. 
I'm going to offload the electrical components out of their containers now for uh, selling purposes later. So one good thing about electrical, those electrical things is they sell for quite a bit of money and, uh, and they're pretty easy to make. They just require copper really and time. You have to uh, sit here and convert the copper to the electrical components. This is also a research bench, but not very important once you maximize most of your researches. A lot of, basically everything left that I have to research, I have to do with uh, ancient science books and engineering research, so. So one thing uh, about this, well, let me finish explaining the base first. The next thing that I have going on here is uh, this farming section. So I have a bunch of cactuses and some wheat straw growing. And what I am doing with this is, the cactuses and the wheat straw are being used to make dust witch. Uh, in order to make dust witch, you need bread, which you, you need uh, wheat straw in order to make it. So up here, I have uh, I have some flour storage. As you can see, I also have some wheat straw storage, which uh, is where all my extra wheat straw goes. And then I also have some bread storage. I can eat the bread too, but I prefer turning it into the dust witches. It's also a good way to raise my cooking. Like you can see, Almar right here has uh, 31 cooking, and I want to actually in keep increasing his cooking. Hamu has 71 cooking because he's currently working on alcohol, which actually does increase cooking. And uh, I'm making alcohol. I'm specifically, I'm making cactus rum because I want to... Uh, my game plan is I'm going to load up on a whole bunch of cactus rum, and then I'm going to vi visit the swamp. And I'm going to sell all the cactus rum and buy all the hash and uh, sake and gohan that I can. And then I'm going to go from uh, the swamp to uh, uh, Flats Lagoon, all the way down here, and Morn. And I'm going to sell all of the hash that I get. I also might stop at Katoon, depending on how I feel. The only thing about stopping at Katoon, though, is uh, there's lots and lots of beat things around there. And they're quite challenging. Also, once you're done with Katoon, you got to run through high bone fields unless you run around high bone fields. And uh, running through high bone fields is uh, not something I like to do. Um, Katoon is a very dangerous city to get to, in my opinion. So I usually skip it as far as the run goes. Flats Lagoon has... Let me, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six vendors that you can sell to. And Morn only has two. So uh, Flats Lagoon, I usually go to that location. And then I kind of just chill out there for a few in-game days as I sell everything. And then I also buy skeletal repair kits, too. Because... Uh, Skeletal repair kits sell at 99% price markup in Flats Lagoon, and they sell for way more in pretty much every other location in the world. They sell for like uh, about 800 to 900 cats more. So it's just a it's a it's a nice way to also uh, get rid of your hash since these are the two places where your hash sells very well, and then you can dip out of here and go back to wherever you want. But the reason I'm doing cactus rum is because cactus rum actually sells for 25% more in the swamp. At, and you can sell it to uh, Shark here, you can sell it to this mud town, you can sell it to this rot, and you can sell it to this swamp village, and then this stone rat village. So there's quite a few villages in the swamp that you can visit and sell, uh, and sell your alcohol to, and also buy hash at. You can also sell skeleton repair kits at each of those locations too, if you would like. Uh, you can see this location on my map here, the two iron, one copper. This is probably going to be my f location of my future swamp base. Uh, because I want to actually start making hash myself and I want to start making sake and rice weed and fabric and all of that stuff myself because this base right here I uh, I could make hemp here, but the it's only 10% green So I'm not gonna get very good production as far as hemp goes. So I uh, I'm not I'm not gonna dive into hemp at this location Although I could I have a few characters that are still standing around aimless from time to time, like Almar right now. And uh, I could definitely add another farm and add hemp to that farm. Or do, do hemp for the farm, I mean. Bard, what do you got? This building here is the last building that I haven't shown you, and this is essentially just uh, uh, practicing. Characters here are raising their assassination, their lock picking, and their thievery skills.
The reason I'm raising lockpicking is because uh, it's very useful when you have characters out and about, multiple characters that can lockpick because you never know who's going to be unconscious when you get to a um, area, a new area that you're. Oh, cool! Bandit, bandits are moving towards my base too. So I get to show you that. Uh, I get to show you the base event. Let me uh, lock my door. But uh, yeah, you don't. You never know who's going to be conscious when you get to. Uh, whenever when you're exploring so I usually like to have at least five or six characters with high lock picking also if you've ever done any uh, raiding like hostile uh, bases or anything like that or even if you like looting humanoid enemies after you wipe them all out when they attack you you constantly get the you have been caught stealing um, pop-up which will interrupt you when you're looting and it will close the window and be tedious and annoying so I like raising my thievery skills as well, because if you have a uh, decently high thievery skill, you'll cut down on that annoyance of you've been caught looting or you've been caught stealing. So that's that's why I'm doing thievery, locksmithing, uh, assassination. I'm doing for uh, guide writing purposes because there's a few things I want to cover with assassination. Um, it, it depends on how you like playing the game. If you like, uh, if you like playing very small units more like you have five characters that go out exploring assassination is a lot more useful to you because you can basically one shot uh honestly any enemy in the game as far as i'm aware uh, i've seen people one shot bosses with assassination in the 90s before so i mean it's it's more it's more going to come down to your personal play style i personally do a uh <laughs> a very crappy sort of play style I kind of just like send characters in and then hit turbo speed and let what happens happens because I'm not uh, I don't like micromanaging characters individually and here's uh, here's an issue you'll experience a lot when you do bases in this game see how Almar's kind of just like stuck he keeps trying to well the reason he's doing this is because he's actually trying to uh, haul items to a bread basket while also uh, taking items out of a bread basket so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna unassign that one task. For Was that the bandit demands? No, it isn't. How'd they get inside? Okay, now they're whacking the door. I wonder if this raises engineering. Yeah, it does. That's funny. So I can actually like keep uh, repairing the door and he'll never be able to get inside. So what I am going to do is I'm going to switch, give this guy uh, to the turret and he's going to start shooting at this hungry bandit in a second. He keeps missing. There we go. He finally took him out. His uh, turrets is very, very low. So that's why his accuracy is El Crapo. So over here, I have a bunch of wheat straw and uh, cactuses growing. Because, like I said, these are like the only things you can actually grow at this location. Let me uh, actually offload. And as you can see, I got a lot of wells around my entire property. And there's a reason for this, too. In my experience, characters don't hit up the wells as much as they should. Uh, if you assign somebody to do some hauling with a well they usually only take like five water at a time or they it's just it's always a mess when it comes to uh hauling out of wells in my experience so what i do to counter that is i build a bunch of wells instead and then i just drag the water out onto the ground when they're fill up fold up and i don't even bother with somebody uh hauling that You'll also notice that a few of my characters move slow around the base, and this is purposeful, purposeful too. Like you'll notice Griffin, he has a bunch of raw iron in his inventory like this, weighing him down. That is uh, done on purpose. If I didn't put the iron there, I like it there. And this is because it'll raise his strength skill when he's running around back and forth doing different tasks. I also assign characters to multiple tasks for this reason too. Like you'll notice uh, Kang. Kang I have sign, assigned to Iron Resource and Steel Refinery. I also have him assigned to uh, Hall Water, which he basically never does because of the reasons I just talked about. But occasionally he will run across the base to the water area and then run all the way back with usually a full inventory, getting him some XP like Crumble John is doing right now. But Crumble John doesn't have a full inventory. 
but this is a good way to raise strength on characters when you own a base. And also, I guess, technically it raises the athletics too, because they are running back and forth. Uh, now, as far as my actual base layout and design, where are the bandits? Are th Apparently the bandits got stuck on the borderline. Can I see them? Oop, oop. They're over there. They're over there somewhere, but apparently they're stuck and not not finishing coming here. Sometimes that happens in this game too. I think it ha I think when they get killed on the way here that that's when it happens. But you'll notice my uh my wall oh here they are. They're all uh hungry bandits. They're not even the actual dust bandits, so I I'm not even remotely concerned. But you'll notice uh these walls are positioned in such a way to where enemies have to run through this kill box area in order to get to my front door like you see them doing now and i put turrets alongside these walls that way my characters can basically uh shoot at the enemies as they're running towards my front door like i said this is designed to be like a kill box area and that's effectively exactly what it does it funnels them into a specific area and then they all get annihilated. Uh, you also notice, or rather another tip I can give you is, when you have characters assigned to the dispose of bodies like this, like Dr. Chung I assigned to get dispose of bodies, and you'll notice he has some uh, crap in his inventory too. Which uh, I want him to have more crap in his inventory if he's going to do this. And this is fine, I guess. What uh, what I'm trying to do, though, is I want Dr. Chung to pick up bodies and carry them to the corpse furnace, chuck them in the corpse furnace with an um, already encumbered inventory. I think he's mining right now instead, yeah. With an already encumbered inventory. What this does, effectively, is uh, when you carry your corpse, you'll get 25% strength XP, usually, uh, when you're lugging it around. And because he already has a full inventory, he's going to get nearly 50% bonus strength XP when he's doing this stuff. And it's just one of those little nice methods of like AFK uh, skill training. He basically, he has a full inventory and he's picking up bodies and he's constantly moving around on his own because he's looking for bodies all the time. So therefore, you know, he's basically raising skills without me having to interfere. I just assign him one task and he's good to go basically. Arwick, what are you doing standing there? Aha, Arwick got stuck in the wall. Occasionally this happens too. There we go, he got unstuck. Uh, and this trick can be used on basically every character in your team if you want. Like you'll notice green, Hamut, Silvershade, East Ham, and uh, not Beep right now. Beep's just chilling in one spot. Why are you just chilling in one spot, Beep? Uh, you'll notice though these characters keep running back and forth because essentially what they're doing is when enough carrots are uh, gathered or sorry carrots cactuses they run them to the supply drop drop them in there and then run back to the farm grab more and they don't grab a lot at one time like you would assume that uh, well actually right now what you're watching th them is you're watching them be extremely inefficient and they're only grabbing a single carrot at a time or cactus why do I keep calling them carrots Let me see if any of these uh, green, you should be assigned to hauling to storage cactus. Yeah. So let's stop that and stop that. So these are the silly things that your characters will sometimes do. Sometimes it's because of what you personally set. Like sometimes you'll set like I did with Almar earlier where I want him to make food but also haul to the bread oven. So he'll constantly get stuck in a loop of hauling the bread that he has in his inventory to the bread uh, to the uh, storage and trying to pull bread out to actually cook with it. So it'll create an indefinite loop where he basically just gets stuck. There's other things in the game that have no explanation whatsoever. Uh, like you've seen before with my characters running one at a time ca cactus back like East Ham is probably doing right now. Like East Ham, yeah, he's taking very he didn't he didn't take the whole stack of cactuses, he only took back like a couple. And then he just keeps running back and forth with a couple cactuses over and over and over and over. What I 
instead of uh, being really annoyed by the inefficiency of the characters, what I would actually recommend you do is take advantage of it. Load up their inventory with something that they won't take out of their inventory and let them run back and forth over and over and over and over again. And this will basically just the strength XP will stack up on those characters big time. And that is how you raise your strength. You can also, uh, if their inventories aren't full at all, you can, of course, uh, benefit from the athletics XP of them running back and forth over and over and over and over again. But I personally prefer the, the strength XP, at least for, you know, a while, until they get strengths above, like, 50 to 60. That's usually what I my uh, preferred range for most of my characters. So let's see. Beep. He doesn't have a backpack. If you're going to load up characters uh, too with items in order to weigh them down as they uh, level up their strength XP, I do recommend you use a backpack because uh, whatever that character is doing otherwise, they might not be able to uh, fill item, put items into their inventory and it will just break them. They'll stick there and be stuck with aimless and uh, not move. Kind of like Bard is doing right now. I don't think it's because he has stuff in his inventory, though. No, he's just aimless because somebody else is using the robotics bench and somebody else is using the uh, thief boxes. So he can't do either of the tasks he's been assigned. But that's okay. And this is really all there is to it. Uh, building a base is pretty easy and straightforward. Uh, well, once you get to know how it all works, it's pretty easy and straightforward. Um... Like I said before at the start of this video, for your first base, I'd honestly recommend you focus primarily on money making and uh, raising your skills. I don't think it's uh, I don't think you should consider like I don't think your first base that you make in this game should be your last base. I think you should probably make a first base with the intention of experimenting, learning, and uh, learning how the game works, and then your second base or third base be your main base. In my personal opinion, the border zone also isn't a great spot for your main base. I would recommend some place with better farming because uh, you do need good fabric production for a lot of high-end trade skills. And anyway, that's really all there is to it. If you guys want more detailed information about this and you want a, uh, a complete write-up on my base and everything like that, check out my website, almarsguides.com. There is a lot more information there. And if I forgot anything in this video, forgot to mention something or anything like that, please let me know in the comment section below. It's always nice being corrected. That way everybody gets the correct information. And uh, aside from that, if this video helped you guys out, please leave me a like because that helps me out. And I will catch you guys around in future Kenshi videos. Peace.